In this lecture, we'll be talking about aviation weather reports and what information you need to know for your Part 107 remote pilot exam. If you've got a copy of the FAA Remote Pilot Study Guide, the information for this lecture is mostly coming from Chapter 3A on Aviation Weather Sources. That's pages 15 to 20. There's a link on the slide here for where to download the study guide if you don't have it. You should also take some time to get familiar with the weather report examples in the testing supplement document. Those are figures 12 and 15 in Appendix 2, and these examples often show up on your Part 107 exam. We're going to be talking about aviation weather reports. We're going to hit the highlights that you need to know for your exam, but this is a big topic. If you're interested in learning more or in getting help decoding the shorthand codes that are used in weather reports, there's a lot of good online sources that you can find with just a quick internet search. There are two main kinds of aviation reports you need to be aware of for the Part 107 test. METAR reports are routine aviation reports that give the current conditions at an airport or weather station in a standard international code format. Terminal aerodrome forecasts, or TAFs, are forecasts of the weather. A TAF gives either a 24 or 30 hour forecast and they're updated every four hours to cover a five mile radius around an airport. TAFs use most of the same codes as the METAR reports, but have some of their own codes related to the forecasting. This is what a METAR report looks like. Now at first glance, it looks kind of like a three year old attack to keyboard but there's a pretty straightforward code format to it. The first block of characters tells you what the report is. This will either be METAR for a routine weather report or SPECI for a special report issued because the conditions have changed quickly. The second block is the station identifier. In the US, these start with the letter K and then you have a three character code for the airport or facility. The third block gives you the time when the report was issued. The format here is the day of the month as the first two digits, and then the next four digits are the time in 24-hour format. The Z stands for Zulu time, which is UTC time zone. And we'll look at the offsets from UTC time in just a little bit. Now we're starting to get into the weather information. This next block is the wind information. The first three digits tell you the direction the wind is coming from to the nearest 10 degrees. Remember that this is true direction, not magnetic. The FAA likes to ask questions about whether wind direction information in reports is true or magnetic. And the rule of thumb is, if it's printed, it must be true. The next two digits are the wind speed, and KT here stands for knots, or nautical miles an hour. Okay, this next block is the visibility in statute miles. And this is followed by codes for the different types of weather events. Now, there may be several of these weather events chained together, and so we'll look into these in more detail in a minute. Next, we have sky conditions that tell you how much of the sky is covered by clouds and the altitude of the cloud ceiling. And then this following block tells you the current temperature in front of the slash and the dew point after it in degrees Celsius. The block starting with A gives you the current altimeter setting for the airport, which is something that man pilots care a lot about but not so much for UAS pilots. And then the last block is for remarks or comments about the weather report. Okay, that seems like a lot, so let's dig into these blocks. Station identifiers are pretty straightforward. Date and time is pretty straightforward too, but if you're looking at METAR reports when you fly, you'll need to know what your local offset is from UTC. In Moscow, we're in Pacific time zone, so we're seven hours behind UTC during the winter, and during daylight savings time, we're eight hours behind UTC. The wind information gets a little bit more involved. Like we looked at earlier, the first three digits are the wind direction in degrees from true north. If the wind direction is changing, you'll see VRB for variable. The speed is two digits, but you can also have a code for gusts that follow the wind speed, like in this example that has G18KT, which stands for gusts to 18 knots. Visibility is usually pretty easy too. You'll occasionally see a block starting with R followed by some numbers, usually when you have like haze or fog, and that's the visibility for a particular runway in feet. So R04 slash 2200 is the visibility for runway four, 
of 2200 feet. The weather block can be tricky because they can chain a bunch of things together depending on what's happening. The thing to remember here is that there are qualifiers which describe the weather event, and then there are the types of weather events themselves. Some of these common codes are listed in the table here. So a code of minus SHRA would mean light rain showers. If it's just flat out raining, you might only see the code RA. A code of VCT, TSRA, would be thunderstorms and rain in the vicinity. Okay, sky conditions. Individual sky condition statements give you the cloud coverage as a three character code and then the altitude of the cloud ceiling in hundreds of feet. SCT-065 would be scattered clouds at 6,500 feet. We just added two zeros to the 065 to get the actual altitude. BKN-080 would be broken clouds at 8,000 feet. Keep in mind that we can have multiple cloud layers, so there may be more than one sky condition statement in a METAR. Temperature gives the, the temperature in whole degrees Celsius and the dew point. If it's below zero, there'll be an M in front of the numbers for minus. The altimeter setting is reported in inches of mercury. And last but not least are the remarks. The remarks are free form, so you can see all sorts of things there, but you'll typically see AO2 or a code like that at the beginning that refers to the type of the weather station. RAB is a special code in the remarks, which stands for rain beginning at about, and we'll give you the minutes after the hour when rain began. So RAB19 would be rain beginning at about 19 minutes after the hour. There are some uh, part 107 test questions that ask about this RAB test code, so it's just worth keeping in mind. The other common remark code that you'll see is SLP, which gives you the sea level barometric pressure in millibars. Let's look at a couple of METAR reports. We'll go through the first two together, and then you can do the next two on your own. Note that these examples are from figure 12 in the appendix two of the testing supplement. So it's possible that you will see these examples on your part 107 test. So here we have a METAR report for a station KINK which I looked up and it's Winkler County Airport in Texas. This report was issued on the 12th day of the month at 1845 UTC. The wind was from 110 degrees at 12 knots with gusts up to 18 knots. There's 15 mile visibility, clear skies. The temperature was 25 degrees Celsius with a dew point of 17 degrees. And the altimeter setting was 30 inches of mercury. Okay, that's pretty straightforward, right? Let's look at another one. Okay, this METAR report is for Boise. This also is issued on the 12th day of the month at 1854 UTC. The winds in Boise on that day were from 130 degrees true at four knots. Boise had 30 statute mile visibility, and scattered clouds at 15,000 feet. Temperature in Boise was a balmy 17 degrees Celsius with a dew point of six degrees. And the altimeter setting was 30.15 inches of mercury. So here's the next one. Why don't you take a minute and see if you can decode this METAR report on your own, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so this METAR report is for LAX, which is Los Angeles. Again, on the 12th day of the month at 1852 UTC. Winds at LAX at that time were from 250 degrees north at four knots, six miles visibility. The BR means that there was mist at the surface. A couple of cloud layers here, scattered clouds at 700 feet and scattered cloud layer at 25,000 feet. Temperature 16 degrees Celsius and a dew point of 15. Altimeter setting was 29.91 inches. Okay, let's look at this one last METAR report and see if you can work this through on your own and then we'll do it together here in just a minute. Okay, this one starts with SPECI. So this is a special METAR report, which means that it was not issued at the normal interval of a METAR report because conditions have changed. This one's for JFK Airport in New York. 
12th day of the month, 1853 UTC. The winds were from 180 degrees true at four knots. Visibility was one half statute mile. The FG means that there was fog at the airport. The visibility then, because there was fog, the visibility on runway four was 2,200 feet. It was overcast at 500 foot ceiling, temperature 20 degrees with a dew point of 18, an altimeter of 30.06 inches. So that's METAR reports, fairly straightforward. Now let's go on and look at TAF reports. The TAF reports are forecasts, and they cover a five mile radius around an airport. These forecasts will either be for 24 hours or for 30 hours, and then they update them every four hours. TAF reports use most of the same codes that the METARs use, but have a couple of additional ones to cover the forecasting part. So let's take a look at an actual TAF report. Okay, there's a lot going on here, so let's break this down. First thing a TAF report gives you is the station identifier, and then we'll jump to the end and show you that the TAF report always concludes with an equal sign. That's how you know it's done. The second block in the TAF report gives you the date and time that the forecast was issued. And then this third block is important because it gives you the time and date range that the forecast is valid for. So this one is from the 12th day at 1800 UTC to the 13th day at 1800 UTC. That's a 24 hour period, so this is a 24 hour TAF report. Okay, now we get into the forecasting part of the TAF. It'll start out with an initial forecast block that will give you the predicted conditions starting at the time period that the TAF covers. And these are the standard METAR codes. Then if conditions are forecast to change within the time frame of the TAF report, you'll see a statement like this FM statement, which means from, which gives you the date and time that a new weather pattern is expected, or you will have a becoming statement, which gives you a date and time range over which conditions might gradually change. If there is precipitation that's forecast during the day, you will see a prob statement, which gives you the probability of precipitation in percent. And also you can have temporary forecasts or tempos, which would report quick changes in weather that are expected to last less than an hour. One thing to note about TAF reports is that they only report the conditions that are expected to change during that time period. So if everything else stays the same, but the probability of precipitation increases, a forecast statement like a from would only have a probability and uh, precipitation codes within it. Okay, so here's a TAF statement that comes from the testing supplement, Appendix 2, Figure 15. This is one that's worth spending some time with and getting to know, getting to figure out how to sort of break it apart. Let's look at two of these forecast blocks. The first one would be this from statement. From 2200 hours, the wind is forecast to be from 330 degrees at 15 knots with gusts to 20 knots. Visibility of greater than six statute miles. Note the P here, P stands for plus. It is forecast to have broken cloud cover at 1500 feet and then overcast at 2500 feet and a 40% probability of rain between 2200 and 200 Zulu time with three miles statute visibility and rain showers. This next from statement starts at 200 Zulu time which is going to be on the 13th day, and they're forecasting winds from 350 degrees at 15 knots. It's expected to be overcast at 800 feet and a 40% probability of rain between 200 Zulu and 500 Zulu with two statute mile visibility with rain or snow showers. Note this block here, which is a becoming statement. So that means the weather is going to gradually change from 600 to 800 Zulu time where the wind is going to be from 20 degrees at eight knots and broken clouds at 1200 feet. Okay, let's look at a couple of practice questions here. These are from figure 15 in the testing supplement. So these are TAF reports that you should be familiar with. In the TAF report from KOKC, the FM or from group is forecast for the hours from 1600 Zulu to 2200 Zulu with the wind from so take a minute and look at this TAF report and answer the question, and then we'll go through it together.
So the answer to this question is A, 180 degrees at 10 knots. And this is where you find that information in the TAF report. Okay, one more question. During the time period from 600 to 800 Zulu, what visibility is forecast for KOKC? Take a second with this one and then we'll go through it together. So the answer to this one is C, greater than six statute miles. You'll find that information here and you know it's greater than six statute miles because TAF reports only forecast visibility up to six statute miles. And so if it's expected to be more than that, they'll put a P in front of the six. All right, that's it for weather reporting. Knowing how to decode weather reports is really a pretty useful skill for a drone pilot, especially when it comes to knowing what your cloud ceilings are. Now, if this topic is still confusing to you, I'd recommend you go back and review the material and spend some time looking at different METAR and TAF reports. And if you need to, run them through some of the available online decoding apps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.